Hello fellow HubSpotters, this is Tyler with Kiwi Creative, and today we're going to be talking about lead scoring, but not just the strategy and the build out of the HubSpot score property like our previously posted video, Crack the Code, Lead Scoring Techniques for HubSpot. Instead, we're going to talk about a much bigger question, and that is how do you know if what you've put in place for your lead scoring system is actually working? If you aren't sure how often to review your lead scoring, how to optimize it, or what reports you should even build to track success, you're in the right place. We're going to walk through how to audit, optimize, and I'll share how to build some of our favorite reports for tracking the effectiveness of your lead scoring efforts. If you need some additional guidance, check out our resource in the description below. Let's get started. Step one, auditing. Auditing the lead scoring framework that you've put in place in HubSpot is really important to ensure that what you've built in scoring is actually working properly. We do recommend doing a full audit on your lead scoring system about every six months, which is one, going to allow you time for data and scores to collect, but two, it's also going to ensure that you're keeping it up to date. So let's talk a little bit more about auditing. Doing a technical audit in your setup is going to help you get more accurate with your scoring, again, ultimately contributing to your goals. So what do we recommend checking during your initial audit? The first thing, are all of your scoring attributes being tracked within HubSpot or are you trying to attribute points to a property that is not being tracked in HubSpot at all? For example, you're trying to associate points to users that attend any webinar you host, but upon doing your initial audit, you realize that the data of the webinar attendees is not even being held in HubSpot. Therefore, that attribute isn't properly being tracked and ultimately it's not working. The second thing to take a look at, did you set up negative points for score decay? And if so, are they working? Subtracting points from a lead score is really important because if someone was awarded with a handful of points because they were really, really heavily engaged for the first week after they became a lead, but eventually completely dropped off in engagement and interest, you want to make sure that their score is accurately reflecting their current engagement. Additionally, we do recommend that negative points get set up when you know a contact in HubSpot is not a potential customer, like employees, partner contacts, job applicants, or really anyone you know is never going to touch the sales cycle. The third point to consider, if you're attributing points based on certain actions in HubSpot through the lead scoring property builder, ensure you're not also trying to attribute the same points through workflows or any other sections of HubSpot, as you might end up awarding way too many points. For more considerations during your audit, take a look at the resource that we have for this video. Another consideration when doing your audit, review the lead scoring model quality. So similar to your technical audit, examine your model to ensure it reflects your current business priorities in your sales process. When you first set up your lead scoring model and assuming you feel really confident about the first version, allow it to run and score leads for the duration of a sales cycle. This is going to help give you data and historical evidence to conduct a better audit and review of its effectiveness. Take note of any portions of your scores that need to change over time or need to be monitored in case there are any shifts in priorities on your team. A good example of this may be that your team launched a specific campaign that you want to attribute positive points to. When does the campaign end? Can you take this concept and make it a little bit more general rather than associating points to a short term campaign so you don't have to change it? Let's get into step two, which is optimizing. Optimizing your lead scoring is all about getting your score as accurate and as helpful as possible for your sales team. You may find yourself changing a few things while you optimize your scoring based on things you may have found during your audit, the score trends you're seeing in your leads or feedback from your internal teams. What should you consider and think about when optimizing your lead scoring framework? First, compare your scores to outcomes. After you've allowed your lead scoring time to run in your system for a few months, you now have data to compare the scores to actual outcomes within your sales process. Having your success metric defined at this point is incredibly important to ensure that you're focusing on the challenge that you were initially trying to solve for. Having data to now use for your lead scoring review, see if the lead scoring numbers matched up with those who converted. For example, while you're building out your lead scoring framework, you hypothesize that once someone reached a point threshold of around 75, they were typically ready for purchase. After reviewing the conversion rates with your sales team since implementing lead scoring, you notice that most of the sales that were closed had contacts that were only sitting around 35 points assigned to them. This indicates that you may want to optimize your lead scoring by either assigning less points to certain actions or just overall reassessing how much engagement a lead truly needs before purchasing. 
While comparing your scores to your outcomes, your goal should be to identify whether high scoring leads convert at a higher rate compared to lower scoring leads. The next point, get feedback from your sales team and your customer success team. Lead scoring is typically in place for the goal of ensuring that your sales team has qualified leads coming to them that are more likely to convert. Ask your sales and your customer success team if the leads they've been receiving since your lead scoring implementation have been of better quality and if higher score lead leads are typically those that are more prepared to convert. Your sales team is ultimately your end user, so ensure that they have an open way to communicate what they see or any requests for updates. The last point, iterate and assess adjustments over time. As you make adjustments to your lead scoring model over time to align with process updates or new criteria, evaluate the impact of those changes and track them. It is incredibly important to note that HubSpot's lead scoring model does impact all historical scoring. So if you make changes to your lead scoring model now, all leads will be updated to reflect those new changes. This may be a benefit to you if you're trying to use contacts in your system to essentially mold your lead scoring model. Don't be afraid to make changes to your lead scoring, but do ensure that they are well thought out and are made with your end users in mind. Getting to the last step, step three is reporting. After you've audited and optimized your lead scoring, now comes reporting on your lead scoring efforts. There are a plethora of ways to report on impacts with your lead scoring success, but let's cover just a couple of these. First, before building out reports, make sure your success metrics are well-defined, like I've mentioned before. During your process of defining and setting up your lead scoring, you should have considered what those are. What challenges were you trying to solve for with lead scoring and what metrics can you tie to those challenges? Some examples of success metrics that align to lead scoring are better conversion rates, sales close, or lead quality improvement. It's important to remember that lead scoring isn't necessarily an initiative that's gonna bring in more leads or convert sales higher, but it is a tool to ensure that you are focusing your efforts on the right people that you have. Next, let's talk about creating custom reports in HubSpot. Custom reports in HubSpot can help you accurately track and identify potential opportunities to improve on your lead scoring. They can also help you call out successes from your initial scoring hypotheses. So what reports do we recommend? Let's walk through these. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and walk through creating three different dashboards that we typically recommend making when you are using lead scoring in HubSpot. So the first one that I'm gonna walk through building is average lead score per deal stage. And this is just a really nice view to have if you wanna be able to see trends in lead scores dependent on the deal stage that someone is in currently. Um, one call out too, if you like to look at visuals while you are doing your audit and while you're optimizing your lead scoring, these reports are actually really, really good to create kind of before you start modifying things. So if you wanna be able to see the impacts of some of the changes you're making, create these reports even before you get to the optimizing part of your you know, lead scoring efforts. Um, these change, again, lead scoring will historically change if you make any changes to the scoring model. Um, so these, these reports will essentially change with it. Um, so first report, like I mentioned, we're gonna be doing average lead score per deal stage. Let's navigate over to reports. I'm gonna go ahead and create a report. So this is gonna be a custom report. So let's click on custom report builder choose our own data sources, lead scoring exists on the contact level. So I'm gonna leave contacts as the primary data source, deals as the secondary. And this is gonna be super easy. So we're really just dragging over two things into this report and then we'll make a few tweaks from here. Um, quick call out too, I really like using this vertical bar for reports like this, because again, it helps you see those trends in the graph that you're looking at. I'm going to drag HubSpot score over to our Y axis, and you'll notice that the second it snaps into place, it says sum. I'm going to go ahead and change this to be average because we want to see the average instead of the sum. And then deal stage. Let's go ahead and type in deal stage so we can pull this over to the X axis and start breaking those scores down by deal stages. So you'll see, um, once I dragged over deal stage, this report just started auto generating a preview essentially. And again, really nice view if you wanna be able to see upward trends, downward trends. And again, create this report if you wanna be able to kind of test different hypotheses out as you're optimizing your scoring system. One call out too, is we see this unknown part of the graph. 
this is just because there's contacts that are in your system that have a score but are not in a deal stage currently. If you want to leave it there, feel free to leave it. If you don't like it there, let's go ahead and filter that out. This is already selected, but we really just want to make sure deal stage is known. Click on apply, and then you'll see that that specific portion of the graph disappears. There we go. So now you have a better visual at average lead score for deal stage. While we're in this report builder, uh, let's go and tackle the second report that we typically end up making. So we have average lead score per deal stage here, but now I wanna look at average lead score per life cycle stage. So let's go back to configure. Um, the reason why I like to look at life cycle stage as well is because obviously when it comes to deal stages, you're really just looking at scores for people that are already in a, a sales deal stage, right? But life cycle stage is tracking that activity on a slightly broader level. So when it comes to life cycle stages, we know we go from like lead to MQL to SQL to opportunity to closed one. So sometimes it's really nice to see those lead scores on that view and that level versus just looking at deal stages. So very quick update from what we're working with now, rather than deal stage, I just wanna break this down by life cycle stage. So let's type that in. It's usually at the bottom and let's drag that over to our X axis. So very, very easy change from the graph we were just looking at. I really just swapped out deal stage for life cycle stage. But again, this view, you can see those trends in uh, the growth of HubSpot score slash lead score. Same thing as the decline. Hopefully your portal has a lot more contact data in it than the one I'm working in. Uh, these scores are a little bit uh, misleading given that the, the HubSpot portal I'm working in is a little bit more of a demo right now, but you get the premise. Uh, again, you can see kind of increases as well as decreases in that average score. Go ahead and title your report. Save the report. And if you want, add it to a lead score specific dashboard if that's something that you want to pull together. I'm going to go ahead and add to new dashboard, this dashboard name. Let's put lead scoring reports. Save and add. And then I only saved the second one that we just walked through, but you'll see it just pushes it to this dashboard I just created. Now for the last report that I typically recommend creating, um, it's not directly correlated to lead score, but if you are using lead scoring as an initiative to help increase conversion rates, um, obviously you wanna be able to track your conversion rates. You wanna be able to see those at a glance so you can have some sort of report where you can compare historically before your lead scoring efforts, what did your conversion rates look like? And then post lead scoring, what does that look like? So I'm gonna go ahead and create another report here. And what I really want to select is this funnel view. I really like to see that progression of conversion rates from a funnel standpoint. I'm going to be looking at uh, this funnel from a lead, um, a life cycle stage standpoint. So again, from lead to MQL to SQL to opportunity and so on, I want to select contacts if I'm going that route. If you want to see conversion rates across different deal stages, you would just want to click on deals, but this is essentially going to function the same. Click on next. This one doesn't auto-generate a preview for some reason, so let's just kind of walk through the, the small changes we can make here. Um, so first one being choosing your chart type. We have funnel bar, we have columns, and then we have tables. I personally really like this funnel bar view. Um, you can kind of look at it from top down, lead all the way to closed one. Um, so I'm gonna leave funnel bar as this. And then when it comes to selecting which stages you show, you can select specific stages if you only want to see the conversion rates from lead to MQL to SQL and then stop there. But I want to be able to look at all of them. So I'm just going to leave all for now. And then let's go ahead and retitle this to funnel conversion rates. I'm going to click save. And then let me just go ahead and add it to existing. Save and add. Let's pop back over to the dashboard. And then you will see at a glance that we have this really awesome view of conversion rates. So again, we're not necessarily pulling in any lead scoring data into this graph, but it's really nice to, again, just look at conversion rates from a holistic view, especially if that is a primary goal of yours, a primary KPI in using lead scoring efforts. So 
Again, the portal that I'm working with doesn't have the most data in here. So there's a lot of zeros, but hopefully yours has a, a few more contacts and a few more um, data pieces in yours. But again, super awesome view to look at this a little bit more holistically. Alrighty. So just to summarize, uh, we've talked about auditing, optimizing, and reporting on your lead scoring efforts in HubSpot. Hopefully there's been a lot of helpful notes, a lot of helpful tips in this video. I know lead scoring can feel very complex and complicated, but I do hope this video helped make it feel a little bit more digestible. Um, if you are looking for a resource or a guide that can help your team uh, in reviewing your lead scoring, making sure that it's working, take a look at the resource we have related to this video. If you've enjoyed all the things that I've talked about, check out our other HubSpot helper videos and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Need custom recommendations for your HubSpot portal? Check out our HubSpot action plan today.